Getting a tan is a hallmark of a successful summer. But how does our skin darken in the sun? And why does it do this? Since summer is fast approaching, today let's learn more about the science of tanning. Our bodies are packed full of important molecules, such as water, proteins and DNA. They're found everywhere, even in our skin cells. When sunlight hits our skin, UV radiation from the sun can enter skin cells and transfer their energy to the electrons inside these important molecules. This excites the electrons and makes them unstable, so the molecules have to quickly release the extra energy, forming small amounts of dangerous hydrogen peroxide and free radicals. These free radicals can bounce around inside cells and harm these important molecules. UV radiation, along with free radicals, can cause sunburns, wrinkles and even tumours. But they're also involved in vitamin D production. To protect from the harmful effects of UV radiation and the free radicals it produces, our body can produce a protective pigment called melanin. This dark pigment is produced on demand by specialised cells deep within our skin. In a process called melanogenesis, literally melanin creation. Melanin acts like a shield, reflecting UV radiation away from our DNA. When we talk about UV radiation, we're actually referring to two different waves, UVA, which has a longer wavelength, and UVB, which is less penetrating. Both forms of radiation can cause damage to DNA, but they do it in different ways. UVA causes the formation of free radicals, whereas UVB causes the bases cytosine and thymine in our DNA to break up, unraveling the whole DNA strand. A more cosmetic concern is the formation of wrinkles over a lifetime of sun exposure. UVB is the culprit here as well. UV radiation triggers skin cells to multiply, causing the skin to thicken up. It also damages connective tissue, meaning that the skin starts sagging. This creates folds known as wrinkles. Does that mean UV radiation is completely evil? Well, not exactly. UV radiation is essential for the formation of a very important molecule, vitamin D. When UV light hits our skin, it converts cholesterol into vitamin D3, but it's not in a form that's ready to do its magic just yet. The vitamin D3 molecule needs to go to the liver to pick up oxygen and hydrogen atoms. From there, it travels to the kidney and does the exact same thing again. The vitamin's final form, calcitrol, is essential for taking calcium from our food to our bones. Let's take a large look at the small intestine. Calcium ions in our food need to get absorbed into the blood to be useful in our bones. They can only do this by binding to proteins called calbindin. If there aren't enough calbindin proteins on the intestine walls, then all the calcium we eat gets wasted. The calcitrol, formed by vitamin D, increases expression of calbindin proteins on intestine walls. The more proteins there are, the more calcium that can be successfully brought into the bloodstream. This calcium can then go to strengthening our bones, such as the femurs in our legs. The melanin in our skin represents an important compromise the body has to make between prioritising UV protection and vitamin D production. In the end, the body takes a better safe than sorry approach. But we aren't always fully protected from the sun. Sometimes we get burnt. Why is that? 
we have already seen how UV radiation can cause cell damage and DNA damage. In order to prevent cells with damaged DNA from becoming mutated and cancerous, the body clears out these cells systematically in programmed cell death, known as apoptosis. If the damaged cells are located deeper within the skin, then the immune system must come in and clear the dead cells out. They release histamines and widen blood vessels, which make the skin painful and hot to touch. Ouch! If the melanin-producing cells are slower to act in the face of UV light, then you may be more likely to burn than to tan. Even when our melanin-producing cells are working perfectly, we're still not using melanin to its full potential. Arthropods and insects put down melanin in layers that reflect light at different angles, creating shimmery, iridescent shells. Certain fungus species even use melanin as a photosynthetic pigment. But this melanin is not working with visible light or ultraviolet, it's working with gamma rays, the very toxic radiation coming from the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Quite impressive for such a small molecule. Melanin is our body's natural protection against ultraviolet radiation from the sun, but it's not always quite enough, and we can sometimes still get burnt. Remember to slap on some sunscreen before heading out today.